Ms Lauder. Thank you, Madam Assistant Speaker. The Canberra Liberals note the strength, determination and talent of women across the ACT. There are, of course, many great women in the ACT who support and lead our community in a range of fields, whether it's public administration, healthcare, education, sport, business, emergency services, disability advocacy, academia, the list goes on. And of course, we all recently enjoyed the celebrations for International Women's Day on March 8. While we celebrated the universal achievements and successes of women, we also had the chance to reflect on the barriers that remain. There has, as Ms Shane has said, been plenty done and achieved, but there remains plenty to do to truly allow all women to achieve equality. I know I attended a number of wonderful events to celebrate International Women's Day, and they were held throughout that week included a breakfast by the National Association of Women in Construction, a YWCA event, a UN Women Lunch, and a Jasiri self-defence class, which was attended by my colleagues uh, Elizabeth Lee, who taught the class, Candice Birch and Ms Lakuda. So in the portfolio of women, there is so much to celebrate, so much to acknowledge, and there is still deep concern amongst Canberra's women to achieve their aspirations and for the elimination of hurdles to the achievement of those aspirations. So I'd like to thank Ms Shane for bringing the motion today, noting the strength of Canberra women, celebrating the success of women, acknowledging the work of organisations supporting women's issues and promoting work to support women and girls to reach their full potential. No doubt there are many, many matters that still need to be addressed. Ms Lakuda raised just this morning her preference for the local availability of home pregnancy termination drugs, and obviously for some people that's the next frontier. These are matters that many in this place would like to see addressed. But also there's no doubt that some Canberra women would like to see other changes that we don't know about here. And of course I encourage Ms Shane, the Minister for Women, and all here to listen to all women not just those who join or apply to join ministerial advisory councils and other bodies. However, Ms Shane's motion, which when I first read it was about celebrating women and their successes, then separately calls on the Assembly to commit to a position about abortion and termination services, a topic upon which we had a bill presented just this morning. This is not the way we should be dealing with this important issue. This is, as is well known, a conscience issue for us on this side of the chamber. We think this is an issue that's important enough to warrant a motion on its own, rather than use a broader motion purportedly celebrating the achievements of women as a means to score some short-term political points against those with cultural or religiously diverse views. You would hope that the members in this place were above that, but clearly not. With that being said, in the spirit of cooperation and the importance of women's aspirations, which we do share, I will speak on what this motion should be seeking to address, that is women's equality and the important role that all women play in the ACT. The Canberra Liberals do celebrate diversity. We celebrate diversity of opinion as well, something quite rarely seen on the other side of the chamber. We also celebrate the diversity among our own team, we're a diverse team. We welcome and celebrate women from all sorts of backgrounds. We're proud to be the first Liberal Party room in Australia to have majority female representation. And that the women in our team also come from very diverse backgrounds. For example, in our team we have Elizabeth Kickett, born in Tonga, the mother of five children, who before entering politics was busy raising her family and undertaking hands-on community advocacy. We have Elizabeth Lee, a former lawyer whose parents migrated from Korea. Elizabeth was also a university lecturer and loved teaching young adults and helping them further their aspirations. And of course we have Julia Jones, soon to be mother of six with her Italian heritage. And Julia has come from work in women's advocacy and the union movement. My background is in community advocacy and I've worked in public, private and third sector organisations. Ms Birch comes from a private sector background. It's a very diverse party room. It's a very diverse representation 
not just of women, but of people from a variety of occupations and a variety of cultural and linguistic backgrounds. We don't just talk about diversity, we live it, breathe it and put it into practice. We just don't expect that all women have the same opinions or aspirations like those opposite. All opinions are welcome on our side. The Canberra Liberals will continue to fight for the right for women to aspire to and achieve great successes in whatever role they choose, whether it's family life, work life, community life, or a combination of any or all of the above. Women should and do have the right to choose what is success to them, and we should celebrate their choices. It's not right that any member here in this place chooses what is a success for women out there, how they should think, act or speak, because every woman is different and that's the way it should be. We can help this by removing barriers for women to achieve their aspirations, particularly barriers in the workforce. My colleague, the Shadow Minister for Women, Mrs Jones, has long advocated, for example, for portaloos for women fireys, as well as proper facilities for breastfeeding mothers in the workplace. And we're happy to see that after that lobbying, the ACT government has audited all directorate buildings and installed locks on breastfeeding room doors so that mothers can feed and breast pump without fear of someone accidentally walking in on them. I know this is something that Mrs Jones has been working on with the federal government as well, and I look forward to seeing more action across Australian parliaments and departments. In conclusion, we support the best intent of this motion to celebrate women, to see women succeed, and to celebrate their successes of women in and from the ACT. I hope we'll go on to be leaders in the field of supporting women's aspirations and welcome diversity of opinion as well as aspiration. I would like to thank Ms Shane for the opportunity to promote the common goals of all members in this place and promote <laughs> the successes of women in the ACT. The question is, the motion be agreed to. Ms Lucas